So I'm Paul Schacht, and I'm the director of the Center for Digital Learning at the State University of New York at Geneseo. You know, we live in a world where collaboration is increasingly important and increasingly valued. So tools for social learning, including tools for social annotation, give students the opportunity to practice those collaboration skills and to prepare themselves to participate in a world where collaboration is, again, increasingly important and valued. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a main benefit to students. There are lots of, I think, um, pedagogical benefits to uh, instructors, again, particularly for tools, when it comes to tools for uh, social annotation. In addition to, to living in a world where collaboration is so important, um, we live in a world where content is increasingly locked up in walled gardens, whether we're talking about a particular platform for engaging with educational content or a platform for reading books or co for consuming other kinds of content like um, audio or video. And uh, those platforms are a barrier to collaboration. If collaboration is important, we need to be able to practice it in the world and in the classroom um, when we're working inside walled gardens um, whose uh, forms of uh, data storage and whose algorithms are different from one another, um, that are following different standards, collaboration becomes extremely hard. So open standards for a tool like annotation can help us take down some of those walls. I think the key principle here is interoperability. So uh, Cory Doctorow illustrates the principle of interoperability by pointing out that any manufacturer can make a light bulb that fits in any light socket. Not every bulb fits in every socket, but the standard for making a bulb to fit in a particular socket is an open standard. So again, anyone has the ability to make a bulb to fit it. Uh, we've been having our students uh, in the Geneseo Center for Digital uh, learning our student affiliates read about interoperability and some of its history in computing. Uh, for example, in the development of standards for web content, um, standards that make it possible to access content from any browser in any operating system. So, as I said a moment ago, um, walled gardens that store data in different ways, that have locked gates, uh, sometimes gates that can only be opened if you pay for the key, um, those wall gardens promote inequity by making privilege a condition of access. Um, implementing interoperable social learning tools that are developed with accessibility in mind, um, uh, again, that removes barriers and it also helps institutions do a, a better job of living into their values of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Every colleague that I've spoken to who's tried using social annotation as part of their pedagogy has been impressed by the power of annotation to create great focused conversations about texts. These conversations tend to be um, much more evidence-based um, than the ones that are generated by a broad discussion forum questions. And they also reduce the tendency of students to echo one another. Uh, lots of different students answering the same question. Once they get in to answer, they see what other students have said, are, are likely to uh, echo what they have already seen written there. But um, if you give every student the opportunity to pick a passage in a text, um, pick their own passage, say what they have to say about it, you're much more likely to get um, individualized and authentic responses from students. Uh, secondly, if your classroom, if you want your classroom to be a space where students are not just engaging with the topic of the course, but they're acquiring um, and sharpening important interpersonal skills, um, the skill of collaboration that I talked about before, or uh, digital skills, uh, you, if you want them to have an understanding, for example, of the principle of interoperability, if you want them to understand why accessibility matters in digital spaces, um, this is another reason why um, 
using these tools and ensuring that the tools are uh, interoperable across platforms. Uh, it, that it's a, you know this is another reason why it's an important and worthwhile effort. And um, participating in the initiative then is a great way to be part of um, a a broad effort. Um, best exemplified by some of the other partners, some of the major partners in the uh, initiative, partners like Hathi Trust um, and the Internet Archive. Um, there is a, there's a widespread and really important effort going on right now to make both learning and the web itself more interoperable, more equitable, more accessible. Joining the initiative is a way to be part of that movement.